Thank you for watching this video from the Center for European Studies at Carleton University. This event was organized by the Center for European Studies and Canada-Europe Transatlantic Dialogue and supported by Carleton University and by grants from the European Union and Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. The views expressed in this video are solely those of the presenter and do not reflect the views of the European Union, Center for European Studies, and Carleton University. So, good morning, and thank you very much for inviting me to this conference. Um, when I was invited a few weeks ago, um, I was hesitating first because I thought going to Canada for four days, what does it mean for my carbon footprint? And as we have in the German administration a policy that if you go by plane, then you compensate your plane by uh, paying to organizations who do things in, in India and Africa and things like that. So I asked Joanne, what do we do with that? Because how shall I explain to my to my colleagues, I go here for four days and they say, oh, you know what it means, four and a half tons of CO2 and your an, an annual output is 9.7 tons, so it's 50% of what you do in, in the whole year, usually. So we, we found a solution that it's compensated now. Um, well, and um, when, when another thing I thought about when I uh, was preparing for you, what do I know about Canadian climate change policy? And three things uh, I remembered. First, they were one of the first big countries that went out of the Kyoto proto Protocol in 2011. Second, uh, there are big problems, which I've read a lot of times on, about tar sand oil uh, production in Alberta, and that we in the EU didn't want this oil because of the carbon footprint. And we have read uh, a lot of times already about initiatives in Ontario, saying that Ontario is a, is a state where there were, at least in the past, initiatives for wind energy and other things. So that's quite interesting. And I'm quite glad I'm here to learn uh, how different and complex the things here are too. So from uh, my first slide, you see I'm the head of the Department for Environmental and Climate Protection. This name exists since three or four years. and has to do that the politicians uh, want to set a sign that it's not only environment as it was 20 years, it's all, uh, then climate protection is an important thing we deal with. I have about 30 people who are working for me, who are working with me, and four of them, this is the stuff we have uh, permanently for climate change. That's only the last three years like that, after we got this name, so first get the name. And, <laughs> and um, so, yeah, really, so the politicians were asked, if you give the, the name, so what, what do they do? Who is doing it? And we were complaining for 20 years, we don't have enough stuff. At least we have since 20 years one engineer for climate change, but we always said we can't move anything if we have not more stuff. Now we have four uh, people, four engineers working on that, and we could use eight or ten, no problem. And another thing that is important, we uh, have in, in Germany on the federal, on the different levels, I would say a few billion euros a year that municipalities can spend on all kinds of programs for climate change. We are funded by the EU, by the federal state, and for by the states. And the problem is always you need staff to deal with that, and uh, the cities have to put 20%, 30% uh, on their own in programs like that. So this is the background, and you see since uh, 23 years, uh, Osnabrück is dealing with climate change issues directly after the Rio conference in 1990. We joined Climate Alliance. Climate Alliance is the biggest NGO in Europe um, connecting 1, 000, more than 1,500 cities uh, who uh, try to um, defend climate protection. So, um, you, I, I will talk about actually what are we doing, because I've, we heard a lot of things for planning and programs, and I will try to show you what we indeed do, because also the politicians say no more programs, no more paper, we want action. We want to see that something changes. I want to show you that. So, um, in 2012, the federal government started a new program called um, Master Plan 100% Climate Protection. 
and they want to find out what has to be changed in federal policy so the uh, Germany and the municipalities are able in 2050 uh, to uh, reach those two degrees goals, which means of the ICCP, which means uh, 80 to 95 percent less carbon dioxide emissions and 50 percent less energy. And we appealed for that, and now we are one of 19 cities and counties in Germany, also with Frankfurt and Hanover, uh, who work on that. And they want to know where are the deficits in policy, and we can tell them. So, let's see. Does it work? Perhaps this? Ah. So, the first thing, um, Osnabrück, where is that? I think the only one here in this audience is perhaps Joanne, because she studied there one month, she said yesterday. So what you see here is Germany, and the, the orange thing is Lower Saxony, the state where I live. And you perhaps know Berlin, you know Hamburg, have heard of that, Munich, city of Oktoberfest, yes. <laughs> and uh, where is now Osnabrück? Well, here it comes, there, in the <laughs> west southwestern part of uh, Lower Saxony, that's it's Osnabrück, the third largest town in Osnabrück. It's called City of Peace because in 1648, the 30 years war in Europe, which destroyed almost totally Europe, uh, the confrontation between the Catholic powers and the Protestant powers, the treaty was signed there in Osnabrück. So Switzerland, for example, and Netherlands were founded in 1648 in Osnabrück. So I don't know why you have not heard of that. <laughs> <coughs> Today, uh, Osnabrück has 160,000 inhabitants, the third largest city in Lower Saxony. And it's the economical and cultural center of, of Western Lower Saxony. We have two universities with two, 22,000 students there, and also something like you have here with the European uh, juristical faculty. We also have the home of the German Environmental Foundation. That is important because it's the biggest foundation we have worldwide in environment. They have a, a budget of uh, 1.5 billion euros, and they fund in Germany uh, every year hundreds of projects for millions of euros. 200 scientists uh, work there in this foundation, so we are proud to have that in our city. We also have, uh, that we are not so proud at the moment, um, uh, by the side of uh, production and side of paper, which is important then for the energy demand, copper products, and cars. Well, Volkswagen caused a lot of problem, and we are very afraid that this major disaster, what happened, uh, may influence our tax situation and so also things we do here. The master plan 100% climate protection, what is it all about? The goal of the German government and the EU is to cut uh, CO2 reduction by 2050 to 80 to 95% in order to fulfill the two degrees goal and 5 to 50% in the reduction of primary energy. The project started, it's funded 80%, so we get about 800,000 euros from the federal government, and we could employ another one uh, at, at the, uh, in my staff just managing this project. So this is very, uh, very strange. Usually the federal government never pays for personal in, in, uh, in local uh, municipalities. It's uh, important we want to do democratic and long-term management processes, so otherwise it won't be possible to reach these programs. Not only Osnabrück is in this program, it's also the county of Osnabrück and the county of Steinfurt, which is just across the border in Osnabrück is failure, the city of Rheine, so uh, a fourth of, uh, of all the cities and counties who take part in this program are in our area. So key, some key data. Uh, about Osnabrück, we, in 2012, we do this balance, which is very, very much work to work it out. Uh, the last one is from 2012. Uh, we consumed all over heat and processed heat and um, gasoline and so on, 4.9 million megawatt hours per year, causing 1.6 million tons in a town with 160,000 inhabitants. So whenever we talk about successes that we have here, a new wind turbine and there, another thousand roofs with uh, solar energy, and that says 10,000 tons of carbon dioxide, we have to keep in mind that our 
yearly output is 1.6 million tons, and we have to cut that to 150,000 tons till 2050. So the average in Osnabrück is 9.57, and Germany is 10. Where does it come from? Industry is 40%. That has to do with the paper industry, which consumes enormous amounts of uh, electricity. Households, big problem, I'll talk about that. Traffic, very, very big problem, not only because of Volkswagen, what has nothing to do with carbon dioxide, it has to do with nitrogen <coughs> dioxide. And uh, what uh, David just said, the community facilities are only responsible for 2% of the, of the whole output. So, but we have to, if we ask other people just what you said, then we have to be the first who do it, and we do it. So if we build new houses uh, or new, new installations, new buildings for the municipality, it's all passive house standard, meaning uh, they it's not, may consume more than 15 uh, liters per square meter a year, which is 90% underneath what is uh, asked by law now. So. All buildings are built this way, and it doesn't cost that much. So what has been achieved since 1990? We have uh, energy consumption went down by 14%. 14 you can see the numbers here. And um, the CO2 emission even got down uh, deeper, except traffic. So traffic, again, is one of the biggest problems which is difficult to uh, influence. And you see here the uh, carbon di hmm. Wait. Wait. Hmm. Perhaps don't use that. Um, you see the goal of the Climate Alliance. Uh, we didn't fulfill that until 2012, so we have to do even much more. Everybody knows that. So what has uh, been achieved since uh, 1990, consumption of process heat in industry went down by 50%. That's a big success. We have a decline in CO2 emissions faster than total energy consumption, what you just see by the figures. And we have a consumption of space heating for households being reduced by 11% since 12 because of better insulation, better heating systems, and so on. And the energy consumption trends reversed since 2012. But we have an overall increase in electricity consumption that's going up steeply, which is uh, quite easy to understand if you uh, think about the electrification of our households, single households. And I tell you, the future will be electric. We will have electric cars, and so the electric demand will go up, and we have to put it on a re we have to produce it in a re renewable uh, way. So current examples in Osnabrück, I will talk a little bit about solar panels, about wind turbines. We do a lot of geothermal heat recovery. That's very modern. Most new house builders now, they uh, take their heat from, from the underground, from the first 100 meters, building geothermal heat recovery systems. We have a lot of insulation, but far enough, not, en not enough to reach the goal. And we do a lot of... Uh, PR and marketing work to promote new techniques uh, which are available to, to inf uh, inform people uh, how they get money for special things. So, and another thing, we have uh, about 150 of those combined heat and power plants to produce heat and power, which is uh, carbon dioxide minimizing. I, I said electric mobility is something uh, we do. Uh, we have about 100 private e-cars now in, in Osnabrück, and the city town works runs uh, buses already, the first small buses. And the decision is made that until 2019, the whole public transport will be electric in, in Osnabrück. So we are, we are now ordering for 200 million euros uh, buses built in France and Netherlands because German uh, companies like Mercedes, and they are not as far as uh, in other countries. So another thing, uh, solar roof survey project I want to introduce you. Uh, actually, Osnabrück was the first city worldwide, as far as we know, uh, that used uh, laser scanner data, which we do every few years, and the automatic cadastro map to find out which roofs in the, in the city uh, are available for photovoltaic. And, um, so this uh, system we did the second time in 2012 with better instruments. 
now measures 10 points per square meters and 3 centimeters vertical and 10 centimeters horizontal deviation. And uh, we got generated raw data showing for every building in on Osnabrück uh, it, how good is it can be used for photovoltaic um, uh, energy. And the people can then go on the internet and put their address in there and then they get their house with an aerial photo. And you see the red ones are the very good uh, roofs. Don't, don't show me anything. Uh, <laughs> I, I hurry. Oh no, five minutes. Two. Uh, two. Okay. So um, that worked quite good. Uh, till now, about 500 year German cities have also made this step and have this uh, cadaster because now uh, people can look up how much do they have to, in to invest, when is the return point for the investment, and uh, how, what does it mean on carbon dioxide. In the end, you see by, the, uh, by this figure how it went up from 1990 to the left, where the first uh, solar panel was built in Osnabrück. Now we have 1,050 roof units, and they cover 16 megawatt of uh, solar power in our city, where it rains quite often. So uh, the same thing with uh, thermal uh, collector area. We have about 10,000 square meters on our roofs. Everybody who builds a new house always has solar uh, panels on the roof. Another project we started in 2015 is the aerial thermaging, thermal imaging project. So we, in a uh, winter night, we sent another plane there who did infrared uh, photos of all 33,000 uh, houses in, in Osnabrück finding out uh, where there were severe energy deficits uh, which were discovered in about 20% of all houses. The results were made public on the internet and we had 28,000 people in three months who went on this catastrophe to find out if their house was in. And we offered them uh, for free uh, um, advice in the Townworks Advice Center and 800 people took that. Here you can see the blue houses Blue houses. <clears throat> um, the blue houses, uh, they are very good insulated, and you can see the one with the red roofs, uh, they have to do something. They can do something. Another thing, wind turbines, here you see uh, to the left, it's one of the old ones that exists already 18 years, and three years ago we got new ones, uh, the, the three big ones there, and they produce about 10 million uh, kilowatt hours a, a, a year more than before. That avoids 12,000 tons of carbon dioxide, and the, only these three wind turbines for, uh, fulfill 4,500 average households. So this repowering is a lot of work, you know that, and um, well, you, you just, uh, you, you look it up if you, uh, yeah, yeah. That right. So just one number, we have photovoltaic units in the city, 1,000, and about 10,000 in the county around us. So this is quite a lot, and we have 130 wind mines. We give the politicians every year a survey of Osnabrück's renewable energy sites, and you see here more than 1,100 sites of the different types of renewable energy. So I don't have time, so you look it up. Uh, that's um, econo the economical value, which is quite important, as you said, for the politicians. Today, we, uh, the county of uh, Steinfurt beside us, they estimated 1.2 billion euros they spent for, for, for energy. In 2050, they want to, suck, suck. so last one, last one? Yeah, I haven't time. Okay, so that what has to be done. Uh, we have to uh, do a lot of efforts in uh, insulation of buildings, increase that from 1% per year to 3%. Traffic, we have to increase very much public transport, electric cars, and electric power, we have to uh, cut the demand. <sighs> so, you thank go. you very much. <laughs>